Warm greetings. I'm going to be talking about a snow day. I'm in a strange kind of headspace that I have not found myself all this time. I'm kind of like lost and found. Of course, I have like, you can see my uh, Oshun uh, altar in the background beside me and the Hindu altar. Asmode is right in front of me, Asmode and Belial. They're always there on my work table. The altars don't go anywhere far from me. Coming back. Um, I don't know what to say, you know, because it's it's very difficult to actually put it into words. When you interact with these spirits, these ancient beings, some of the things that you download, some of the things that are channeled to you, some messages, you cannot just put them into words. It's difficult. It's a realization. It's something you feel, it's something you experience, it's something you internalize, it's something you introspect and you understand. Of course, he has, I'm, I'm working with Asmodeus at the moment and I don't know what to say. Uh, he has been able to do something and I, this is really interesting. You know, take it as uh, something that you people can learn from. And, and anytime I make a video, it's with a purpose in my mind. That's why I just don't make videos like that. Like there is, there is a certain purpose to the video that I make. I have been in hermit mode for far too long. I've started enjoying it. I've realized the fact that this path is a path of solitude. You have to walk it alone. And uh, you have to go through everything. All the things that are happening inside you. Because all of this is happening inside you. As a practitioner, life is not normal. Yeah? It looks normal on the outside, but you know within... It's not normal. It's exciting. It's ecstatic. It's full of upheavals, challenges, and wonderful uh, experiences with the divine spirits that you connect to. But all in all, it's worth it. I want to give this message from Asmodeus. Handling one's poison. And the way I saw Asmodeus, his, his persona, his voice that I heard, it was calm, soothing, easygoing. Contrary to what people would expect. He has a very soothing, like, for me, this is my experience, of course, as a practitioner, Many people say that he's very intense. And sometimes he can just be like so quick on the face, like, hey, hey, you know, I'm here kind of like it can scare people. People say similar things about Lilith, about uh, Belial specifically. For some people, again, am I, have you caught me talking about Belial anyway? <laughs> so uh, Belial can be really calm and uh, a grounding kind of energy for some people. For some people, he can be a total storm, tornado and tsunami and whatnot, you know, like a natural calamity. And I have experienced that side of him, the volatile side of Belial. And I have tried to get accustomed to it till Asmodeus just put a break and he was like, hello, dude, what's going on? Dude or girl, yeah, whatever. 
at this point in time it doesn't matter what your what you consider your gender to be the important thing is the message so like there's no news just calm down everything suddenly it was like the key result achieving emotional balance All of this, all of this, you know, it's getting so hard for me to talk about the experiences. They are worth it, of course. I greatly appreciate these spirits. You know, the spirits of the, that you work with, the gods, goddesses, the ancient gods, goddesses you work with, they are not here to fulfill your desires. They are here to teach you. Get your head clear, please. Of course, in the way they do sometimes, you know, when you form a... Uh, 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 connection you know when they like you when they when there is a loving kind of bond between you and your uh, deity they do things for you they help you they assist you they fulfill your wishes sometimes they don't for various reasons Sorry if I'm yawning. It's late at night again. I normally record my videos at the end of the day. So, pardon me for that. Anyway, coming back. So, Osmodius calmed the storm suddenly. The storm that had come to my life for various reasons. And, uh, and my experiences with Belial, his energy. Handling one's poison, Asmodeus, this is the message. Poison is never once. Like what he means to say is what I understood when I sat with it, when I meditated on him. Poison is never once own. Like poison is not a natural, naturally existing thing inside of us. It's made, prepared, energetically, emotionally, chemically. He's talking about the chemical reactions in our brain. He's talking about the emotional reactions. He's talking about how energy changes when we create that toxic vibe. It is made, prepared, energetically, emotionally, chemically inside us. And when it bubbles, we get sick. Now, this, you know, the interpretation of a divine being's message is very, very important. The problem lies in correct interpretation. We very easily say in tarot readings, take what resonates with you. Fine, it resonates with you, but what does it mean exactly? Go into it, find it out. Yeah. It's made, prepared energetically, emotionally, chemically inside us. And when it bubbles, we get sick. Because, why do we get sick? Now, this is the main point. Because we just don't know how to handle it. And this is so true. We don't know how to handle this poison that we have created. So what is the remedy? Love and light. Asmodeus, and for that matter, not only Asmodeus, all the ancient deities actually, if they are authentic deities and not egregores, not thought forms, if they are authentic, if they exist without our support, they do exist, they have always existed, they are ancient. then they are not all light. They're a blend of light and shade. They're a blend of light and darkness. And by light and darkness, by light and dark, I do not mean good and bad. Not at all. Please stop my request to everyone who has come here, who is listening. 
and if you have got, got like friends and family who believe in this strict light and dark kind of segregation, it actually doesn't exist. Light is not good, dark is not bad, essentially. It's, it, it's not like that. And that's what the ancient deities, they teach us. It takes us a lifetime to understand it. Some people take it to a point where they take darkness to be something absolutely badass and exciting and they just keep getting into it. And some people are like, no, no, please keep us into the light. It's all about love and goodness and stuff. You have to accept the totality and the totality is a blend of it. And all these beings are a blend of it. So... When it bubbles inside of us, this poison, we get sick because we don't know how to handle it. Uh, that is why for us, in brackets, humans, that's why for us, humans, there's a stark difference between good and bad. In reality, they coexist. Then he writes a personal, then he gives me a personal message. And... Uh, which I'm not getting into. And I'll move forward and I'll read out. What's light and dark? They are nothing. We are not inherently dark. He's talking about the demonic divine and anything that you choose to call demonic. We are not inherently dark in the sense common human understanding imposes exclamation mark we are not internal uh, um, inherently we are not inherently dark in the sense common human understanding imposes we impose it yes we do we are all that is his message further goes we are all that is talking about the demonic divine. We are all that is, donning different personas, but parts and aspects of all that is. We choose to limit this all that is and put it into our own understanding of God, what God is, according to religion, of course, thanks to the man-made creation, religion. And then we talk like we are experts. I'm not pointing at any particular person or sect or community, anything like that. What I want to say here is that all of it are our interpretations and they are faulty. We do not want to understand the truth. We just want to interpret and that too in a wrong way. So we are, we are not inherently dark in the sense common human understanding imposes, we are all that is, donning different personas, and but parts and aspects of all that is, okay? Then he gives me another personal message, which I'm not getting into, and then the messages for the collective consciousness. I'm, okay. Okay, now, these are personal messages, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, yeah, further he goes. In the end, it all boils down to one thing, energy. In the end, it all boils down to one thing, energy. Yeah? It's all, this, this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. It's all a dance of various energies. It's all a dance of various energies, much like the stock market, you know? Yeah. He's also somebody, Esmode, if you're interested in the stock market and trading and stuff, you can consult him. He, uh, he keeps on suggesting me from time to time, like recently he has suggested me to learn more about stock markets. I'm like, keep me away from it not my topic, not my thing. Anyway, so yeah, it's all a dance of various energies, much like the stock market, you know, 
varying degrees of hues and colors going up and down. Yeah? I find it very amusing when I observe all this going on. He's talking about humans, their, their energies and emotions and feelings going up and down. They themselves, they're going up and down, unable to see what they are made of, unable to see what their spirits are made of, unable to see the reality, the truth as it is. And just this up and down, energetic up and down. He, he looks at it from the point, he looks at it from the point of view of stock market, just like we look at stock market. Those who are into it would understand it better. I understand the gist and the essence of the message. I feel it. All right, then he goes, the battle is on. The battle is on. Should you join? It's your choice. There is nothing to gain or lose, but to experience. I cannot tell you these import these messages are so important for all of us as humans, for the entire human race. These messages are so important. They are very simple, but they don't sound so. They have depth to them. If you sit with them and try to understand what he's trying to say. I might switch off the fan and just excuse me for a moment. Yeah. They're just being nasty with my hair. They, not, not they, the fan, I'm sorry, yeah. So I also ex like felt and got messages from two more deities with sitting close to Asmode. I'll, I'll go deeper into it later on. It'll be, it'll be a, a thing that I'll do for my own gnosis and understanding. So he says, the battle is on. Should you join? It's your choice. There is nothing to gain or to lose, but experience. Choose. Choose every day. The first step to manifestation is choosing. Very simple message. Maybe we come across this message every single day. Maybe we'll try to practice it. But very important. And the way he says it, you know, his voice, his energy, his persona, the way he makes you feel when he says it. It's like a, a teacher or a professor in class whom we all respect from our heart. We know that we have to listen to him. Willingly. We are willingly giving our ears and our eyes and our all our sensor, senses are engaged in listening to him, trying to understand his messages. He, he seems like that. The rest of it is, it's personal. I received some more messages and some symbols and all. So I'm not getting into it, but I felt it important for me to share this message because it was for the collective. I hope all of you are doing well. Stay tuned to my channel. Thank you so very much for all the love and support. It really means a lot. I recently have suffered an injury and I'm, I'm like just trying to recover. It's nothing very serious. I was walking my dog and I fell down real bad and wounded, got wounded. Uh, my, a portion of my arm, I'm not showing it on cam, but, and my knees are, there is pain. I'm, I'm going through it, so I'll be fine soon. Uh, those who are interested to book Readings with me and services with me, please look down below. The description box has the, has a list of all the services available right now. And uh, apart from that, I will be, I'm interested, I'm, you know, after connecting to Asmodeus, I'm interested to explore more into spirituality as a whole, like what, how, how I define it. 
and what it means to work with different kind of deities. It's, it's like he's introducing me to them. And uh, there's one thing I would like to say to you. It's very important when you're working with any deity to listen. It's very important. Most of the time we, you know, especially if we are in a devotional relationship, uh, a connection with our, with our deity, whom we are close to, we like to do things for them. We are giving them offerings and we are doing stuff. It's great. It's a great way to connect because that is a human's way, you know, lighting incense, lighting candles, offering food items, drinks and other stuff and gifts and all. All of that is fine. It's not that they need it. Uh, it's a way of honoring. It's a way of showing love and respect. And it's wonderful. Thumbs up to it. In fact, you can share it with me. I'll, I'll be making a video about, about offerings once again. I think I made it uh, a long time back when, uh, again, it was a video on Asmodeus and I had kept some offerings for him. All of that is good. But don't skip the listening part. They sometimes give life-altering, life-changing messages to us. Most of the time they're trying to do that. But we are so engrossed with sometimes it's gnosis we want, sometimes... It's more information we want. Sometimes we want favors and uh, help. Uh, we, we, sometimes we need help and assistance with some problems. All of that is fine. But please, please make it a point to listen to your deities. Yeah? That is also one way of showing respect. They're talking to you. They're talking to you. They're sending you messages all the time. All right? And, and, honor yourself. Honor yourself without purposefully disrespecting anyone else. I just felt like giving this message. I always do that. I give the message that I feel like giving to you. Yeah, from my heart. Yeah? So, 